Based on the values provided uh, by Markov himself, we have this, what we call transition, uh, state transition diagram. Okay, so we have two states here. We will represent this as state one and this as state two. Okay, just to enumerate the states. So these are the values that the process can take. Okay, and the, pro the probability that um, it will be a consonant after a consonant is 0 0.337, which is given here. Okay, x of n is equal to one. Based on this, the probability that x of n plus one equals one is 0 0.337. So you see, it's more likely that a vowel will be, uh, be, be, will be seen after a consonant. That's with probability 0 0.663, okay? You can see also that, that, that uh, also here. And uh, similarly, after a vowel, the probability that you see another vowel is 0.128. And it will become a consonant with probability 0.872, okay? So if you have a letter, let's say this is your text and these are your letters, etc. If you know the value of this letter, you can estimate the probability of this one being a vowel or a consonant and for that, you do not need the information about this letter, okay? Whatever happened before, we do not care because this by itself provides us in enough information to make a guess about this next one, okay? These we call one-step transition probabilities. Now, as you see, I have written N here, N plus one here, so I didn't specifically write x2 equals 1 given x1 equal to 1, x3 equals 1 given x2 equals 1. Um, so this is general. Uh, what this means is the so-called transition probabilities, okay, these ones, transition probabilities are constant with respect to time, okay? This we call a homogeneous Markov chain homogeneous in the sense that the transition probabilities do not depend on time, okay? Um, Non-homogeneous Markov chains, we will not cover in this course. So this Markov chain, you see, we can also represent this transition probabilities in a matrix. We have two uh, states, and if you represent uh, the transition probability from state i to state j using this notation, we can write the transition probability matrix in this form. So the first row has the transition probabilities from state one to all states, including itself. And row number two has the transition probabilities from state number two to all states, including itself. Okay, so these values are encoded in this matrix, as you see, from state one to state one, I have 0 0.337. From state one to state two, I have 0 0.663. From state two to state one, that is 0 0.872. And from two to two, it's 0 0.128. One thing you have to notice here is that every row here is a distribution. Okay, every row adds up to one because, well, you have a transition, either you stay in the same um, state or you go to some other state. Obviously, you will make a transition at every time instant. This is how we define the process because, well, in this specific example, it's the value of the next letter. It's either consonant or vowel, no other alternative. So the sum of these rows should add up to one because each row in this matrix is a distribution, okay? Such matrices we call stochastic matrices, okay? So the transition probability matrix is an example of a stochastic matrix. Every row adds up to one. So the transition probability matrix of an N state discrete time Markov chain comprises one step transition probabilities. What is the probability that in one time step, 
okay, from n to n plus one, from like uh, time number three to time number four. What is the probability that you will um, go to state number j given that you were in state number i, okay? That is how we define this transition probability, okay? This is probability that x of n plus one will be this one, okay, from i to j, given that you are in, sorry, x of n, you are already in state i. This is how we define a one-step transition probability. And this matrix um, is made up of these one-step transition probabilities. Okay, so each row of the matrix adds up to one because each row is a distribution and such matrices we call stochastic matrices. Now, we have the one-step transition probabilities in the transition probability matrix. So what about two-step transition probability? So for instance, you are in state, state I, what is the probability that I will be in state J after two steps? Not in the next one, but after two steps. Now for this, we are going to use the law of total probability, okay? Let's go back to the very beginning of this course. Remember the law of total probability. We condition this probability on um, a partition of the state space. And state space here is, well, it's the list of the states. It's the set of the states, one, two, et cetera. Um, however many, it could be even infinite. So here we have a sum over all indices K, which might be the states. But now this probability we are trying to compute is already a conditional probability. So when you condition it further on the value of the process in the middle step, x n plus one. So you see, we, we do not know x n plus one. If I know x n plus one, I can just use uh, the one step transition probability for x n plus two. So what we will do is we will condition this on x n plus one. But when you do that, you have to be careful because as I said, this is already conditional. So x n plus two equals j given x n plus one is k, but also xn is i, because that we already know, times the probability of the condition, okay? When we, when we used the law of total probability, uh, we, we did many times, but here you see the probability itself is already conditional. So this condition should remain on this, probability that x of n plus one equals k, given xn is equal to one. Okay, so this is a little bit like, um, let's say probability of A given B, let's say C1, C2 is a partition. In this case, this will be equal to probability of A given B, C1, C1 given B, plus probability A given B, C2, times probability C2 given B. Okay, so the condition here will remain. Now, when you look at this expression, x of n plus two equals j, given x of n plus one equals k, and x of n equals i. Remember, x of n is a Markov chain. So I have the observation at n plus one, I also have the observation of x n, but at this point, it has become irrelevant because this is a Markov chain. I already know the observation at n plus one. So this one gives me no information, okay? So I can discard it. And what is remaining is x of probability of x of n, x of n plus two equals j, given x of n plus one equals k, times probability of n plus one equals k, uh, given x of n equals i. Now, both of these are one step transition probabilities. The first one is from k to j, and the second one is from i to k, okay? So this I can write as the sum over all k values, probability i to k times probability k to j, which makes sense because, well, this is a two-step transition. So in the first step, 
you can visit any other state and that is given by probability i to k and then you would like to end up in j right that is your destination so from that st state wherever you went you will go to j probability kj so this is the main result here with two step transition probabilities you multiply two one step transition probabilities and then add them up over all possible intermediate transitions